Hello YouTube, this is Gwyneth Psychic Isaac speaking. Um, I'm here in my back patio of my house and um, I was just looking through the newspaper and I found a clipping that was rather interesting. Okay, now for many, many years I have had an increasing awareness of the corruption of the Australian government. It really sort of sank in around about a year or 18 months ago or thereabouts. Something terrible happened, which I'm not at liberty to speak about. Um, because if I do, the goon squad of that private cartel called the Commonwealth of Australia would be on my doorstep but anyone who knows me knows my life, knows what situation I'm talking about um, but this article in the newspaper has it's really I read this newspaper article and I just thought, yes. And suddenly it, it made sense of exactly the relationship that the Australian government has with its people. Okay, This newspaper article is not actually about um, government at all. What it's about, it's about domestic violence. Okay, um, I'm not the first person to say this. Uh, there's various other people on the internet that said it. Um, you can go and look them up if you want. But this newspaper article, I read it and I just thought, oh my god, this is so true. But it's, I have, I'm a widow, I don't have a violent spouse to deal with. But I do have a violent unwanted life partner who has been making my life a misery for years and that is the Australian government. The Australian government is um, not a true government. It, the Commonwealth of Australia is a private company and it is owned by the IMF, the World Bank, the United Nations and the Roman Catholic Church. Okay, It is registered with the US Securities and Exchange Commission, not that they are a shining beacon of truth either, but they are, do have a registration process for corporations. And the Commonwealth of Australia is registered with the US Securities and Exchange Commission as a corporation. And if you want to get your pen and paper ready, um, in a moment I will say their uh, CIK number. So their CIK, if you just want to pause this video and go and get a pencil and paper and go and check this out for yourself. Um, I think it's www.ussec.gov but if you type in um, USSEC into any your favourite search engine it'll come up with their site. Now what you want is the CIK code, the SIC code, okay, CIK. Their CIK code is 0000, 000 Eight zero five one five seven. If you type that in to the USSEC website, you will come up with the Commonwealth of Australia. They are not um, a governmental organisation. They are a private corporation with shareholders and they don't answer to the people of Australia that like all corporations they answer to their shareholders and their shareholders are not you and me 
their shareholders are, as I mentioned, the IMF, the World Bank, the United Nations and the Roman Catholic Church. Now, I'll just show you this article that I found. I found it in the Midwest Times, which is a re regional newspaper in the Midwest of West Australia. Um, the date is Thursday, June the 21st, 2012, page 13. The article at the top is Abuse about power control okay I don't think you will be able to read that but in case your resolution is good enough you may be able to okay what it's talking about is domestic violence and it's basically a um, opinion piece, a um, infomercial, I suppose you'd call it, although I don't think it was paid, um, for an NGO called Chrysalis Support Services, which is a woman's refuge. Okay, and I'm just going to read out this article quickly. There are no typical victims of domestic violence. The um, I won't read it all, okay? And I claim fair use on this article, okay? This is for study purposes. Um, it was written by Patsy Gould, who is a relationship and family violence counsellor for Chrysalis Support Services Incorporated in Geraldton, Western Australia, okay? Um, they can be contacted on 618-9938-0750 if there is anyone who wants to know about chrysalis um, or who needs help in dealing with a domestic violence situation that's who you contact and they're really really good um, Fortunately, I've never in my life had a violent spouse. Um, I think I've been rather careful about choosing the men that I've let into my life and I've got rather a strict um, screening process. That's why I haven't had any domestic violence issues. So, but anyway, that's beside the point. Um... I'll just read out some of this. I won't read out all of it. But just the, basically what outlines abuse in a relationship is the main crux of what I want to um, say is in this article. And this is between um, partners or married couples or spouses or whatever. But it also goes for relationships in general, including... In my humble opinion, this is not what they're saying in their article, but in my humble opinion, the relationship between people and governments. Um, there are no typical victims of domestic violence. However, relationships share similar characteristics. In all cases, the abuser aims to exert power and control over their partner, the victim, okay? Power and control. A abusive relationship is not about love, it's not about caring, it's about power and it's about control. And that is absolutely what the relationship between the Australian government and the people of Australia has become about, okay? Examples. They may use the children accuse you of bad parenting, threaten to take the children away or threaten to report you to child protective services. This has been a crux of state control of the populace of Australia for the last 
God, 20 years that they have used state control um, of children to control the populace. And the major I can tell you the majority of families here in Australia, especially in the eastern states, where I lived for many years, but also to a lesser degree here in Western Australia, that is what they do. And that is a key hallmark of an abusive relationship, according to Chrysalis Support Services, who specialise, who counsel every year. I don't know how many, must be dozens, must be hundreds of women wanting out of violent, abusive situations with unwanted partners. Okay. They may threaten to hurt other family members, pets, the children or themselves. Now, how many times... I have seen or heard of in my time here in Australia, which has been 20 years that I've been living in Australia, where the government, for whatever reason, couldn't get at the person that they wanted to get at. So instead they chose to go after somebody that that person cared about. You know, this is... So sad. This is this is what the Australian government does. Okay, I've had it happen to friends of mine. Where the um, I'm a good person. I'm a Christian. I love Jesus. I have a kind heart. But like I say, I have had, um, because I'm a prophetess, I can see a lot of things. I've had people within the Australian government at various times, because they couldn't affect me, they threatened my friends. Okay. They may deny the abuse occurs and blame their bad behaviour on you. <laughs> How many times has that happened? Oh my God, I hear of that all the time. That the Australian government, they deny their own abuse and instead blame their bad behaviour and say, you're the one at fault. I'm a lawful person, okay? I am a lawful human being. I love the common law. I'm currently studying the um, law of Australia, the Australian Constitution, the Magna Carta. Um, I've been studying the Holy Bible for 20 years, um, including in Greek and in Hebrew. Um, this is, but what I'm saying is, this is what they do. This is this is their modus operandi. This is what I've seen, and it's not been isolated cases. It's been over many, many years that I've seen this. This can leave you feeling confused and unsure of yourself. You betcha. You feel like shit. Sorry for my language. You feel terrible after you've had a run-in with these people. You think, what have I done wrong? You know, why me? It's not you. They may control all finances and refuse to share money, making you accountable for what you have spent. <laughs> Centrelink. 
nafset. And not allowing you to work outside of the home. This is what Centrelink does. Centrelink for people outside of Australia is the social security uh, system here in Australia. They um, supervise unemployment benefits. They supervise um, sickness benefits, disability benefits, old age pensions. About the only pension, uh, single parents pensions, the only pension that they don't control is veterans, veterans pensions, which is through the Department of Veterans Affairs. Okay. If you earn over a certain amount and you're on a Centrelink payment, they make you pay, uh, I better word this carefully, you can keep the money that you've earned, but over a certain dollar level, they will take one dollar for every two dollars that you earn, they will take one dollar off your pension. So for every dollar that you earn over a certain level, you lose 50 cents off your pension. Now what is the point of that? And your other alternative is to go off the pension, and that is a hard life. Been there, done that. Oh, yeah, and Centrelink has a, their own personal goon squad. Okay. Uh, they, have, um, they employ private investigators to spy on pensioners. And this is an open secret. I'm not saying anything that anyone doesn't know anyway who has studied Centrelink even passingly. That Centrelink does that. It's been on television that they do that. And um, maybe they catch some who are defrauding the system. Maybe they catch some who are not defrauding the system and make them suffer. There are, you know, for instance, if you're on a disability pension, um, what sort? Let's say you have a back injury and that back injury is not causing you a great deal of pain but if you ever went back to work then and you were trained in manual trades if you ever went back to work then pretty soon you'd be a cripple again Centrelink might randomly choose to send one of their spies to spy on you and if they see you for instance Pitching up a trailer when you're supposed to have a back injury, you lose your disability pension and you get um, put up on fraud charges, criminal charges. Yes, you can hitch up a trailer with a dormant back injury without doing your back in all over again, but you couldn't go out to work and do it every day. This is what they fail to realise. It's so sad, and that here in this article is a marker of an abusive relationship. They control the money, they want to control how you spend it, which they've done now with the basics card, um, and not allowing you to work outside the home, which the, the penalising um, cut-off scheme, and you're only allowed to earn about a hundred dollars what is a hundred a week or a hundred a fortnight which is like hardly worth the effort if you're on a job which is like twenty dollars an hour then um, you know it's five hours work you've got to get there you've got to get back you've got to pay for fares or you've got to pay for petrol you've got to pay for parking they don't take any of that into account. All they see is that you've worked five hours at $20 an hour, therefore you now have $100 that you didn't have before. 
They don't take into the account that you, you've had to pay for petrol, you've had to pay for parking, you've had to pay for maybe fares or you've had to, you know, uh, maintain a wardrobe, professional wardrobe or whatever. You know, you had to buy tools. They don't take any of this into account. They are fascists. They absolutely are. Look at my face. This is a sad face. This is a face of, of, of seen decades of hardship. I'm just about I'm just about ready to cry. I don't mean any harm to any of these people whatsoever. I'm going to make this video. They could use put downs and salts, criticism, name calling, making you feel bad about yourself. <laughs> yeah, they're experts at that too. I've got to pause this for a bit. Sorry, everybody. Just got to pause it. I'm back again. Sorry, I had to have a little bit of a break. This whole thing is just so sad. It really, truly is, guys. Right? Next. Making you feel bad about yourself. Yeah, they're real good at that. They may use certain looks, actions or gestures to frighten you. Yep. They do that too. They may break things, destroy property, abuse pets or display weapons in a threatening way. Yeah, seen that a lot. Destroying property. A very dear friend of mine, this poor woman, the Australian government through their cronies, the police. They made this woman's life hell. They, um, one day when she was out, they went around to her house and smashed every window in her house when she was out. Who could she go to to complain? <laughs> and then they threatened her friends, you know, for her friends to tell the police where she was. This woman had done nothing, okay? Nothing at all. She still doesn't know, this poor woman still doesn't know why the police chose to have something against her. She wasn't a criminal. She was just an ordinary person. Do you think she felt frightened? Hell yeah, absolutely. They may limit your contact with friends and family, requiring you to get permission to leave the house. You know? 
occasionally, you know, rules of criminal association get passed or talked about, you know. And um, not everyone that the police calls a criminal is really truly a criminal. Sometimes they're just people who, I don't know, I just feel really, I don't even have words to describe how, how sad the situation is. Next. Not allowing you to work or attend school or social activities, you know. <laughs> they do that too, you know. They make all major decisions to find the roles in your relationship, are in charge of the home and social life, and treat you like a servant or possession. Yeah. They do that all the time. You know? Getting people to spend two out of the five working days a week in these job services providers looking for jobs and they've got to apply for five jobs each day. There's no work out there. You know? Is that um, defining the roles? Treating you like a servant or a possession? You know, restricting your movement? This is what they do. And it says, this is power and control, not a shared and fair relationship. The Australian government does not have a shared and fair relationship with its own people. The relationship is that of a fascist socialist state with the people being cattle. that the state feels that it is their job to manage. Like I say, this article was not about the government. It was about abuse of spouses. My husband was a missionary in Melbourne. He was a beautiful man. And my father also was a lay minister and a um, lay preacher, highly intelligent, beautiful human being. Both of them loved Jesus with all their hearts. I loved Jesus with all my heart. Um, he is true and he is lovely. He is absolutely beautiful. Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that you speak to people through this video today. I bear no malice against the Australian government. I'm just about even beyond being sad. I don't know how to describe, I don't know what word to use for how I feel, you know? Deep longing for a just and better world, maybe, you know, that is my hope, my dream, a world where the law is the law and applies to all. The law that we have in this country is actually a good law. The Australian Constitution is beautiful. I have not come across one part of it that I could not sit down and say, yes, that's a good law. We should keep that one. You know? 
I haven't seen even one part of the Australian Constitution where I was like, mm, don't like that one. It's really wise. It's really good, true, and just. So is the Magna Carta. Although it's archaic, it is still valid British law. And it's also beautiful. Most beautiful of all is the Holy Bible, the King James Version of the Holy Bible, which is the third founding document of all Australian law. If a law does not line up with these three documents, it's not a valid law. I have one place that I save the deep anger, sad feelings of the corruption that's in this country. I have only one place that I will ever vent it, and that is before in the process of studying the law to present cases of justice to uphold those who have been oppressed. If you ever meet me in a courtroom, I can guarantee you'll have your hands full. Okay. Not with violence, physical violence. That's not the way, ever. Physical violence only leads to more physical violence. But in a courtroom, I've noticed that lately I get put to the bottom of the list. I've noticed that. I'm intelligent. I am full of love for, for you know, for all the people on this earth that God came to save when he died on the cross, when Jesus died on the cross, for all the people that Jesus came to save when he died on the cross, I'm full of love and compassion for them. Even my enemies. Jesus said, love your enemies. I might not agree with them. I might be seriously in court, um, in contention with them. But God has shown me that usually there is some grounds for compassion. Even in the midst of great injustice, because usually people behave as they behave for a reason. Usually they don't just get up one morning and decide they're going to be a really horrible person for the rest of their lives. That usually doesn't happen. People usually become abusers because they've been abused. I um, don't know what else to say. I think that's all for today. But like I say, government does not have to be abusive. But the Australian government at the moment certainly is. And that's not using any other guidelines except the guidelines that have been developed to enable women to escape from abusive relationships. It's the same guidelines that are used by women's refuge organisations all over the world. 
and those are the guidelines that I have just read to you today. All the best everybody. May God bless you. May you walk in peace and love. I speak to my enemies. Lately they've increased somewhat. I say, I mean you no harm. I mean you no harm. All I want is justice. All I have ever wanted is justice. I mean, I've heard people say, what if the police went away? The country would be filled with lawlessness. To which I reply, the country's full of lawlessness now. The country is full of lawlessness now. Better go, people. You have a really great day. I love you all. And keep looking up. And remember that as long as there is an eternal God in heaven looking after you, ultimately everything is going to be all right. See you later.